My first title is The Passover After the Passover After That. And uh, there's a easier way of saying that, and it's three Passovers. And uh, I, almost, um, I almost entitled it uh, Three Passovers in 24 Hours, Three Passovers in 24 Hours. But we're going to stick with three Passovers here. All right, we're going to be in Luke chapter 22. And uh, we'll skip around a little bit, I think. Uh, and if we do, it would be always good to keep your place in Luke 22 if we go somewhere else. But uh, Luke 22, and uh, right now we'll just look at verse 14 through 16. <clears throat> And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not uh, any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so the first Passover is the one that he's sitting here with them. <clears throat> and um, it's um, the... It really is on that same night that he was crucified. And this was the annual Passover. This was the usual Passover that all Jews um, were involved in. And uh, what, what we might call the real world Passover. We'll deal with the spiritual world Passover shortly. Um, but it was, it was the one that was a feast. It was the one that was a celebration of the deliverance from Egypt. Um, uh, out of Egypt, and it was not his hour that has come yet. It is Jesus talking to them um, in an attempt to communicate certain things once he is gone. So uh, the second Passover is going to be when he goes to the cross, because he is the Passover lamb. And Spiritually, that is the real Passover to God, and uh, it's not—it's not a celebration. Uh, it's a crucifixion, and that is where His hour has come. And contrary to the celebration that all Jews were doing about deliverance from from Egypt, um, there will be no deliverance for Jesus uh, from. The people of God. Uh, that's the Passover that he's about to enter into. So um, in verse 15, he, sa he talks about with, with desire, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you, okay? And, um, and he wants to do that before he suffers. He feels like there's information in this sit-down meal that he can communicate to them um, that will, Lord willing, open their eyes to the true Passover that he's going to experience at the cross. So um, it's, this is more of a teaching moment for them and, you know, from his heart. And it's about eating that you might become nature eating of the lamb that you might become nature. And the Passover of the cross, well, of course, it's the true, the true lamb for the first time is being offered up and being slain. And um, so those, those are the two Passovers I've just brought up. And the third Passover <clears throat> is going to be... Um, Verse um, 16, for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And I put a little note in mind, for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof of this kind of Passover, because he's saying that in the first Passover, in the Jewish Passover, until it be, key word here, <clears throat> fulfilled. Fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And so um, <clears throat> the disciples, you know, they're, they're going through the ritual 
the regular ritual of the Passover feast. Um, and Jesus is trying to add eternal meaning to that, like he's always trying to do in communion and in our hearts in everything. Um, and then his desire is that they would, from this first Passover, the one, the Jewish Passover they're celebrating now, that they will hear something and be able to leave that meeting and go out and eventually live that according to um, uh, the meaning of fulfill, that I will... You know, I will no longer eat of this kind of Passover anymore until it be fulfilled, and then we'll eat of the true, all one spirit. So <clears throat> that's what, you know, what, what is he saying? He's saying, I, I don't want this kind of Passover anymore. And um, I wrote, and once I fulfill this meaning on the cross, and you embrace its true, it, it being as true, uh, then together we will celebrate this in the kingdom of heaven. And we will all be of one spirit and one heart. And, you know, I was pondering, I was trying to think, well, why would he say, I will never more eat of this Passover? Well, it's the ritual Passover. And it reminded me of, of uh, <clears throat> uh, the book of Amos and what, what God said there. And... Uh, uh, and it's saying what he doesn't want because of what he does want. And he says, uh, Amos, uh, if you do turn there, keep your place in Luke. But he says uh, in verse 521, I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beasts. So he wants all, he, he wants for the Father, he wants all things done in the Spirit and in truth because the, because the Father seeks such. And he said that at the, to the woman at the well. The Father seek, is seeking such that will do that. And so these scriptures are saying, well, you know, I don't, I don't want that anymore because that's not really what I had in mind. Hosea 6.6 6 says, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God, really knowing him the way that he is, and worshiping him in the spirit of that and in the truth of that, instead of how religion would paint him to us. And then, <clears throat> then uh, when Jesus was, um, you know, walking the earth and one of the Pharisees asked him, you know, what's the greatest commandment and all that? Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. See, this is, this is so far beyond religious communion. Uh, probably the Passover communion with the Jews or the Lord's Supper with us Christians. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first uh, and great command. Oh my God, this is the this is the pinnacle of what he desires. But if you don't know him, you can't worship him in spirit and in truth, which is what he was talking about when he brought that up to the woman at the well. And um, so he wants the sacrifices that have the true meaning behind him. And he was saying those scriptures that because he they don't know the true meaning. They don't they don't understand his sacrificial nature. Um, they understand it in relationship to what it did for them instead of in relationship to who he is. And they don't put the lamb on the inside of them. They miss the true and truth of all truths in, in the Passover. <clears throat> so back to Luke 22, verse 17. Um, here he's, he's asking for a dividing a dividing. <clears throat> Verse 17, And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. He didn't just give it to each one. He said, I want you all to work this out. 
I want you to divide this among yourself. Spread it out. Share it. All of you become a part of it. All of you be partakers of it um, uh, for them to eat of the same spirit. To the, because that's what he's after, and that's what communion is meant to be about. Um, but, of course, even during communion, pro-self sticks up his head, and then there is strife among themselves. So well, let's read verse 19 down to 24. And so I'm reading starting at verse 19 here with purpose, and that purpose is that we understand Jesus's heart and what he's trying to do to prepare to prepare them to understand his Passover that he's about to give on the cross and so that they might eat of this when it's fulfilled in them in the kingdom this government governing them so so hear the heart of the Lord and then see what happens verse 19 and he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. That's, that's his body and he's breaking it. And he gave it unto them saying, this is my body which is given, which is given for you. Uh, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed, which is shed for you. Always for you, for you. Share it. D divide this among yourselves. Um, and verse 21, And behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Okay, so the response <clears throat> is, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was. Who? Okay, who is it? There's, there's no coming together. There's no divided among yourself, you know, so that we all have the same spirit. It's which one of you are doing this, all right? And, um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see, which one of them it was that should do this thing? And there was also a strife among them. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? This is immediately at the end of the, this Passover and the Passover that he had at the cross. May it be fulfilled in the kingdom. So Jesus desires to, that it be divided among yourselves and their reaction is strife among themselves, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Um, but if they... If they would enter into the spirit of it, if, if they could enter into the spirit of it, they would prove that they've already eaten the lamb. That would be the proof that they've eaten the lamb, that they would have the, that, that they would have that spirit. So what is the problem? They don't understand death. Uh, like many Christians, they see it as a sweet transition. In other words, you fall asleep and then you wake up resurrected. That's, that's, that's death to most Christians. Um, Jesus said this in John 11. Then said his disciples, um, well, this is the disciples talking to him. Then said his disciples, Lord, if... If he sleep, talking about Lazarus, he shall do well. How be, be it Jesus spake of his death. And they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. They must think that sleeping through it all is everything, that it's equal and acceptable like death. And, and in Matthew, and so this is probably going a little long here. Okay, so far so good. Uh, in Matthew 26, you know, you know all these verses, but um, this is um, uh, Jesus speaking. Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock, and shall be, they shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. 
And Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. I will never be offended. Mm, how many times? And, uh, and likewise said the disciples also, verse 35. And so he took him to Garden of Gethsemane, and it says he fell on his face. Jesus did. He fell on his face and he prayed. Um, and in verse 40, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto them, Peter, 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 you're the one who said you won't be offended. You'll, you'll be in touch. You'll die. You'll do whatever. But you seem to be taking the commitment of entering into death as sleep. You sleep through this, and when you come out on the other side, it'll all be done, and it'll all be perfect. Um, <clears throat> what, could you not watch with me for one hour? And uh, so he went back and prayed, and then verse 43, and he came back again and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and he went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words, and then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour, but it's my hour. He, mine hour is not yet come. My, my hour has come. Um, so, um, so you, you had the same story when they went on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I don't know if you've ever looked at Luke's version of that, but... but um, uh, Elijah and Moses appear and talk to Jesus and in Luke's version they don't even know that's happening they, w they were asleep and they woke up as they were getting ready to leave they didn't hear anything they were talking about the cross remember that? that's what they were talking about and they didn't hear any of that they missed all of that <clears throat> so in closing, I'll just read this. The Passover before the Passover meant nothing to them. The, the truth could not even awaken their bodies. But worse, now comes the Passover after the ritual Passover, the coming of the real one, that they're going to miss that one too. That would be like Israel in Egypt falling asleep through the preparation that had to be done for Passover. I mean, can you imagine them down in Egypt? God's going to deliver them. But the, but the deliverance is going to be through the Passover or through the death of a lamb. And, um, and they and they're been told, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a lamb. I want you to put his blood here. I want you to eat that lamb and everything. And, and then they all sleep through it. Um. And then I wrote, uh, then if they slept through it, there would be no lamb, no death, no blood, no lamb in them, just the death angel at their door. And then I wrote, whose fault? Whose fault? Jesus didn't explain the ritual clearly enough during the the first feast or Jesus didn't demonstrate it enough on the cross so um, one of the things that the Lord's been really dealing with me about is that his word is spirit and life and we are dull or asleep that we are dull and asleep and for example, we may not even notice that right there in those little scriptures, there were three Passovers, and each one of them had, had a purpose, but all were meant to slowly bring those guys more and more and more into his heart and to understand the, the symbols and the rituals and blow those things out of the water as the reality of it came in them so that at that day they would all 
feast together in the understanding and in the spirit of what that meant, it would, it would be fulfilled. The Passover would be fulfilled. That's what he was talking about. And there's um, an area that he's been sharing on. I, I spent most of my day over the house, him talking to me about this. And it was another example of how we read the scriptures, but there's so much more there. Um, and we think we know the story, but but we have to, you know, we have to love the Lord our God with all of our heart. We have to say, I don't, I am sure there's more here. It's spirit and life, and because communion, communion, communion is not just coming before God and saying, you know, help me, bless me, uh, you know, do this for me, do that for me. Uh, and then leave off. Communion is saying something and being in such a relationship. I mean, in other words, not just a religious, ongoing um, religious relationship, but in such a relationship that he feels like he can talk to us and tell us his heart. And, he, you know, Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine. I remember here reading that and thinking, you know, he's he knows what that's like. <laughs> he must know what that's like. And he's going, you know, he wants communion. He wants give and take. He wants he wants this divided among ourselves. He wants a real communion of of all these things, so much higher than than the Jewish Passover, so much higher but also so much higher than the um, American or the Christian um, Lord's Supper to, to truly have eaten of the lamb that, the, that they could never eat of in, in Egypt because they didn't have the true lamb. Nor could anybody at, at a Lord's Supper service eat it unless they are beyond all of those things and they have been partaking of him and loving him and ask and asking lord what is there more to this and 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 then he feels free to say yes there's more and then he gives tidbits a lot of times early on we go we go that was a good meal, but it was small. <laughs> you don't know, you're supposed to say, "Could I have seconds? <laughs> you know, could I have seconds on the lamb?" And uh, and he will gladly, the spirit will gladly give it, no questions about it. But it takes a while for us to get our hearts in the in a steady flow with the Lord, because there's so much going on in this world, and we're all, what about this and this and that? And there's so much going on in our lives. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I understand that. Um, you know, I, I taught on Sunday, and then I taught yesterday, and then I'm teaching today, and I'll be teaching tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, I know busy, but, um, but I also know that our lives, you know, need to be full of lamb. We need to be full of lamb. And then we can carry out all of those things in a right spirit. Anyway, I'm sorry for going on and on. I love you guys. I do. I love you so much. And I, I, I never mean any of this. Some of you really know this, but I never mean any of this as some sort of a rebuke or some sort of a thing where you walk away feeling bad. And, you know, um, I told... Uh, I told Kelly, you know, some people, the way I share, they, um, they find out I'm going to be sharing, and they say, well, I guess Randy's going to be sharing the flog again. He's going to flog us. <laughs> but to love the Lord thy God with all our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength and mind, and, and I want that. So I'm going to pray, even though we've gone long. Father, in the name of Jesus, our little hearts just reach their arms out to your son. And, and you want to glorify your son. And you want 
the Spirit of God to be able to expand not just the Bible understanding of deep things, but of the glorious, the glorious heart that is the Lamb. And from, from embracing and seeing and pursuing Him, we find that He is also the door to you, Father, to understanding you in this same Spirit and to you, Holy Spirit in this same spirit. And we want to divide this among ourselves. We don't want to be divided among ourselves, uh, accounting who is the greatest. We want, to, we want to share this with one another and feed one another and feed on him in this way. So bless these folks that are on, that are hungry, that cry out, that need covering, that need and desire, not just need, but need and desire, more of Jesus and less of us. So I ask it, Good Shepherd, take care of these sheep. In your name, amen.